Israel trailed its coat by attacking an embassy in Damascus, an un unlawful attack. Uh, it didn't consult its allies, didn't consult the United States before doing so, but it now wants the rest of us to stand shoulder to shoulder to it as it deals with the inevitable fallout, namely retaliation from Iran. Well, joining us now is Sir Richard Dalton, a veteran British diplomat in the region. He's former UK ambassador to Iran, also formerly consul general in Jerusalem. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good morning. What did you make of what we were hearing there from uh, Elon Levy? Uh, basically, he's seen caught between two stools of saying that uh, this attack can't go unpunished, but at the same time, Israel doesn't want to escalate this into a regional war. Israel trailed its coat by attacking an embassy in Damascus, an un unlawful attack. Uh, it didn't consult its allies, didn't consult the United States before doing so, but it now wants the rest of us to stand shoulder to shoulder to it as it deals with the inevitable fallout, namely retaliation from Iran. Uh, it's highly doubtful whether the kind of deterrence which your previous speaker said now had to be mounted by Israel would achieve its objective unless it was the result of a total military defeat of Iran. In other words, a devastating regional war with consequences for Arab countries, for all the rest of us, for the, the, the world economy. Uh, rather, I believe that the gathering of international leaders and the Security Council meeting later today at nine o'clock our time uh, will try to find a way out of the tit for tat cycle that we are beginning rather than uh, allowing Israel to exercise the kind of massive revenge which uh, your previous speaker uh, called for. Do you think that um, it was right for British forces to take part in the defence of Israel? Well, I would, I would rather they didn't. This is not our quarrel. And the way in which Israel has conducted itself uh, has brought on an element of these catastrophes that is now threatening it. Uh, and uh, I would rather that, that Britain hadn't allied itself right from the start, right from October the 7th, so totally uh, with Israel. I think we sh our interests suggest that we should have preserved some distance rather than giving that green light, which our prime minister did, and in all the other ways subsequently, in which we've encouraged and assisted in a small way uh, with the arming of Israel to conduct its campaign. But we are where we are now, and the important thing is to reinforce everyone's efforts, particularly the call of the United Nations Secretary General for maximum restraint. All the leaders of Arab countries that border Israel have called for restraint. Iran has said that as far as it is concerned, uh, the matter is closed. Uh, there was an attack on them and they have responded. Uh, the Iranian response has uh, breached a taboo hitherto on no direct attacks on Israeli territory originating from Iran. But the important thing is to find a combination of military preparedness together with diplomacy to nip this appalling prospect of a regional war in the bud. If um, you say the matter is closed from the perspective of the Iranians, what's the point of summoning the British ambassador, presumably for a carpeting? Well, because the Iranians over the years reckon that Britain has moved from a position of trying to act as a bridge between the United States and Iran to being wholly between wholly to being wholly aligned with the United States. And in, in instead of upholding, as we have historically, uh, land for peace. Uh, the uh, avoiding committing ourselves 100% to Israel, uh, that is where we are now. And therefore, from their point of view, uh, it is entirely legitimate to call in the British ambassador and say, it's time you changed your policies. Uh, they might also 
wish to point out, I, I don't know whether this is pure speculation, that uh, British facilities in the Gulf might also be in the line of fire if this conflict escalates. The Iranians have always said uh, that if there is retaliation on their soil, uh, including from the United States, then is United States facilities in the Gulf and elsewhere, the 45,000 troops the United States has in, in, in so many bases, that they will be at risk too. Isn't there an element, though, that the Iranian regime is a repressive theocratic autocracy which uh, represses its own people? What business of it is it to get involved in uh, the Middle East, in the issues uh, involving uh, Israel and Palestine? And uh, wouldn't most of the regional powers uh, there in the Middle East agree with me that, that, Israel, that Israel should be left alone by Iran? Yes, there's a strong case for that. And I totally reject the ideological element within Iran that uh, the Israeli state is illegitimate. Uh, but at the same time, in the from the Iranian point of view, the situation they are in is that of continuous military threat from the United States and Israel over a very long period, uh, including actual attacks on their soil by Israel, assassinations, uh, sabotage, uh, uh, breaches of, of, of Iranian sovereignty. Uh, faced with that, they would argue, they have a right to defend themselves. And given the impact of sanctions since 1979, uh, their conventional forces are strong in manpower, but weak in modern technology. Their air force is in the same position. It's almost non-existent in relation to the air forces of its regional neighbors, let alone Israel and the United States. Therefore, they've adopted a technique of forward defense, chiefly the arming of Hezbollah. So you can argue that Iran should leave Israel alone. And to the extent of accepting the existence of the state of Israel, I would say you're absolutely right. But we are facing a, a strategic challenge of winding down multiple conflicts in the Middle East. Uh, so many countries are intervening across their borders to try and affect the outcomes of the disputes in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, mm. uh, Turkey, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the United States, Iran, they're all on the list. And the interest of trading nations like ourselves is in winding down a whole series of conflicts. And that cannot be done, history shows, simply by zapping each other militarily. Okay, thank you very much indeed. That was Sir Richard Dalton, uh, former UK ambassador to Iran, speaking to us.